Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. Well, I am fresh back to Kansas from a fabulous trip to Switzerland. I was hiking and painting in the mountains, and I'm still dreaming about it, thinking about it. And it's actually a theme for today as well. But before I get into that, I just want to review what we're doing for So Confident for this month and give you just a little sneak preview of what's coming in a few short days. So for June, we are taking the ET pattern and basically using the original profile of the body of it. And we are giving you three different patterns for sleeve uh, variations. So this one is the gathered sleeve raw edged here at the top and finished at the bottom hem. A longer sleeve that ties at the bottom, a couple of tails. There's a dart and an opening here at the bottom of the sleeve, but it's nicely tapered. And a pleated sleeve. Where are you? I know you're here. There we go. beautiful, more tailored look, which has an inverted pleat and sewn for about an inch and a half at the bottom. When you sign up for the class, you get the instructions of the video of how to make the t-shirt, how to make all of the variations, and you get the complete sleeve patterns graded for all the sizes. And for the ET, it's the extra small through XXL and then 1X through 5X. This has been very successful. This is a nice cotton jersey with a little bit of spandex. We have nine colors for kits, which we still have, I believe. I haven't checked. I've just been back a couple of days, but I think we probably have at least most of them. So check that out. Uh, if you are a yearly member of So Confident, um, great. This is already in your account, but you're welcome to sign up for this month's only. And then I have a Q&A session, Central Time, at 4 o'clock this coming Friday. So you can ask me all the questions you want to about this particular garment and anything else you want to talk about. So we always have a lot of fun on our Q&As, hopefully have a little laughter and, and some fun as well. Good way to start off the holiday weekend with a little Q&A right before we uh, head into hopefully a weekend of sewing. Now, next month we are starting a new pattern. And for the next two months, July and August, we're going to be using the Riviera shirt. The Riviera shirt is a pattern that I've liked from long ago. And it's been out of print for a while, but we are bringing it back as a digital pattern, which will be available this coming Saturday. And with that uh, is the new project for this month and the following month. But I'm just going to show you what we're doing in July. This is a modification of the Riviera. And here it is. Oh, it looks good with the background, <laughs> a little black and white. Um, this is pretty similar to what happens in the Riviera, but this time we're buttoning it completely instead of with just the one button that it usually has. Um, using the shorter version, and then we're changing the back up a little bit with a complementary overlapping back. The sleeves aren't changed. To much at all, really, except for adding uh, a section of contrasting print or fabric on one sleeve. We've changed the collar from a traditional uh, collar and stand to a stand-up collar, very much like what we did for the Now shirt, if you remember that. This is a fabric that was printed especially for us. It's block printed. It comes in four motifs as a complete unit of fabric. And so part of what you will learn is how to lay this out to get something that looks the same or similar to this. So this is coming. If you're a So Confident Yearly member, everything will be available to you on Saturday. Um, kits are available, will be available. The prep materials will be available, and then the video will come a week from this Friday. And you will also be able to sign up for the monthly class, of course, if you choose to. So get ready. This is coming. All right. And just a correction. So the Q&A is on Thursday. Oh, 
All right, thank you. <laughs> I would have been late. <laughs> Not good. All right, Thursday Q and A at four o'clock Central Time. Okay, yes. there yes. we go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> If you tuned in last week, you heard about an Instagram challenge that we all are doing around here. And we're using the art from an artist by the name of Naomi uh, Manuo. I hope that's how you pronounce her name. And it's a very contemporary artist. I love her work. And we're using her work. You can go to her website and look at all of her beautiful paintings and get some inf inspiration of how you want to put an ensemble together. So this is the picture that I chose that I'm going to work with for the next hmm, couple of weeks. So by the end of July, we're hoping that you'll put together your look by either making the ensemble or putting together a beautiful inspiration board, mood board, whatever you want to call it. And uh, put that on Instagram and those who um, enter get something special. I don't know if we know what that special thing is yet, do we? Maybe not. Uh, not exactly. Not exactly. <laughs> we'll figure it out. And then there will be a winner who will get a $100 uh, gift certificate to Sewing Workshop. So this is my picture that I've been studying and we'll see uh, where it goes. But if you'll look at our Instagram page and Facebook page, you'll see some of the boards that have already been put together, mostly by Alex, I think. And maybe Betsy, maybe Aaron, I'm not sure. But for sure, Alex has, has been putting this together and is kind of running with this concept. You can also find out more about the whole challenge on our blog and both our Facebook page and Instagram page. So check all those out. Like us on both of those. And we'll see by the end of July what you all have. It's going to be really fun. So, so as I said, I have just come back from Switzerland. I'd been to Switzerland before because it is the home of Bernina. And I, years ago, was working with them on the development of a couple of projects. Uh, my label, which was the fitting program, and the, what was then the new 830. Uh, so I'd been to their factory, and I'd been to Switzerland once. But I'd not been to Switzerland for any length of time, and I certainly was never hiking in the mountains. But that's what I did. I went with a group of people who I did not know, mostly from the Bay Area. They were all younger than me, and it was really fun to be with a bunch of younger people. And they, their conversations are just different than, than mine, and I really had a, a wonderful time. I spent a couple of days in Zurich, a day in Lucerne, and then took a train to a small village called Bals. And it was astonishingly beautiful. And one of the things that I, I just couldn't get over was how no matter what part of Switzerland I was in, whether I was on the train or in the city or in the mountains, there was a similarity to the architecture and the colors of the nature there. And so what I've put together here is sort of a representation of what I saw. All the, most of the buildings and the houses were white, and then there was a lot of wood, a lot of Scandinavian influence of light woods, natural woods, and dark aged woods also. And then, of course, the mountains have all of these incredible stones on them, rocks and stones and cliffs. And, and all of those are more of a gray tone with a little mica glistening, crystallized um, uh, material in them. And so these colors on the wall kind of represent that. What's missing is the green of all the different greens of the, the vegetation on the mountains, from dark to light, yellow green, blue green, and then, of course, all of the wildflowers, which gives you the pop of color. But it made me understand that this palette of colors that I saw in the architecture there was perfect to set off the beauty of the greens and the vegetation that you saw around it. So no, there's no green here on the wall, but that's a huge part of, of course, uh, what you see in those mountains. So in this small town of Vals was a, is a, a very small, uh, charming boutique. And it's open literally with a key. They hand you a key and you can go in when you want. And so for those of you who may have watched, I filmed a short little video, a couple minutes uh, last week, uh, grabbed one of those, a couple of those techie uh, Bay Area girls and asked them to help me. 
and they filmed me in this boutique, and I showed off uh, some garments. Um, I showed off a black jacket, a striped T-shirt, and some black sort of athletic pants, and I thought it was a fantastic idea for an ensemble. So that's the theme of what we're talking about today. So I've pulled together what I think are our patterns that you can work with and the colors that really work uh, as a great, not just basic, but a very classic uh, look that you can wear from dressy to casual, daytime, evening time, and, and always look really crisp and fresh and wonderful. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So I started off by uh, remembering that I owned a very lightweight linen Chicago jacket, and that's what I have on. Now, the jacket that I showed you in the little video uh, was a, a notched collar, fairly traditional blazer. It was lined and all of that. But it struck me that this single layer lightweight linen jacket is the really all-purpose jacket for a pretty long period of time, at least here in Kansas. You know, those times when you're either traveling and you need a jacket on the plane or the train or whatever, or maybe you're going out, uh, throw on a great, uh, simple, uh, solid color jacket over your dress, your jeans, your athletic pants, whatever. So the Chicago jacket for me is that kind of jacket, and there's a couple of reasons why. First of all, it has a fairly large uh, arm's eye, arm opening. It's very non-traditional. There's a, a seam. I brought another one in a color so you can actually see the lines of it, actually, so it's probably better to describe it in this way. So you see here it's a raglan sleeve in a way, but it dies into almost the shoulder seam. So this allows you to wear something under it that might have a bigger sleeve, uh, more of a, a dolman kind of garment, maybe a sweater, a couple of layers underneath if you need to. But the details of this jacket are really unique, very, very interesting to sew, make, and wear. So this is a seam. This is a dart. This is top stitching, so it connects to that seam. And the top stitching is what borders the pocket, this sort of single welt pocket, except it's not. It's a top stitched opening around the pocket. So this whole connection is a really interesting uh, piece of geometry. One button that is reinforced with a patch, so to speak, on both sides. And then there's another little dart right here above that, right here. Small dart, and so you have some bust fullness. This dart can be raised or lowered to actually be where it should be for you, so it gives the whole uh, body of this fairly straight forward jacket some shape. The collar is simple. It does die into a hem. If there's anything that's hard to make about this, it's making sure that that all is a nice connection up there, but we have good instructions, so uh, everything else is pretty straightforward and pretty easy to do. The back is very simple, nothing going on particularly on the back. There's no side seam to this, so if you're someone who needs to add some width in the hip area, then that is all done right here on this seam, where you just add a little bit to this part and add a little bit to this part and splay that out and you can increase the width of the Chicago jacket. But this is in a denim, but what I have on is a lightweight, almost handkerchief weight, not true handkerchief weight, but pretty much. So the, the hem on the Chicago jacket is this. It's a double fold. The hem allowance is three quarters of an inch and you, it's a, a double fold three eighths of an inch finished hem. Well, on this jacket, this has a baby hem, very fine baby hem. So I'm going to show you in a second how to do that. I think that it's, you know, the lighter the fabric, the narrower the, the hem can be, the heavier the fabric, the wider the hem, that sort of thing. So that's the uh, concept of putting baby hems all around. There are no facings to this garment. It's very single layer, straightforward, no inside development of a jacket, uh, but it has a, a great shape to it. So um, I've put it over the Maison top, 
And I put it over the mace on top because I, I think that to prove really that this larger sleeve of a mace on top can fit nicely under uh, this Chicago jacket without bunching. So here's the mace on top. And you can see it has a fairly large sleeve dropped here. I'm going to show you how to make this a little narrower through here, if you like that. I'll show you that in a minute. And then I put it with the Mason joggers. These two pieces are in the same pattern, the joggers and the top. And the joggers are just that. Uh, they have an elastic waist. We have a two-inch wide piece of elastic inside of this casing. And then we've also added a um, tie, and we're using a shoelace, a stretchy shoelace here. Drawstring, that's the word I was looking for. Has a nice pocket, nice deep pocket, and then the leg has the band on the bottom, which you can put on or not. I know a lot of people have used this pattern for their other pants uh, type fabrics, uh, wovens, knits. This happens to be a cotton knit. But you can make this in a woven fabric, leave off the band, and either leave the uh, bottom of the width of the leg as is, or you can add to it, change the shape, whatever. It's a nice fitting pair of pants. So that is the ensemble that I devised uh, as a result of what I saw and showed you in that boutique. So let's talk um, technique a little bit. So here's this baby hem, and when I say baby, I mean tiny. It's about an eighth of an inch wide finished. So you start by sewing, stay stitching on the original finished hemline. Um, in this case, this might be three quarters of an inch, maybe not cut off the hem allowance of the Chicago jacket, so that might be sewn at three quarters of an inch, but that's a reinforcement and becomes your guide for folding the fabric. So now you're going to fold this three quarters of an inch against this stitching line and you're going to use some sort of an edge stitch foot with your needle position to the left, two or three clicks, and they're going to sew very close to that folded edge. And you will see the stitching of this right here probably on the very edge of that fold. Don't worry about it. If it shows, it doesn't matter. It's on the inside of the garment. If it doesn't show, great, whatever. So once you've sewn that, then I take my longest shears, my eight or nine inch, very sharp shears, and I cut that really close. I used to use the, um, well, I call them the elephant ear scissors. What are those called? Oh, um, kind of duck? Duckbill scissors, thank you very much. It was another animal. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, I used to use those, and I find that I found that I just couldn't get long, nice, smooth cuts. And so the longer the shears, the better the trim. So I cut off quite a bit of that three quarters of an inch, and now I'm down to about that eighth of an inch. We cut it really close to the stitching line. So then you fold it one more time. Now this represents about an eighth of an inch. It looks bigger in this little picture. And you're going to sew it one more time using that edge stitch or uh, in Bernina world, it's number 10 foot. And that's your baby hem. Uh, it's, it's quite easy. This particular technique is one of five narrow hem techniques that we have in a tutorial called Five Narrow Hems and that will be on sale this week, but this is just one of them. And this is one of these standard things. This is a great hem to use on something very sheer and lightweight, such as chiffon. If you're, if you're making some bridal type uh, gowns or something pretty fancy and you're using layers of chiffon or organza, those kinds of fabrics, that's a great hem for that kind of fabric, but it also works for any sort of lightweight fabric. It doesn't work for a heavy fabric particularly, but anything, linen, cotton, um, chalet, those kinds of fabrics, really great. So that is your hem finish all the way around 
on the Chicago jacket. And of course, doing that eliminates that uh, sort of tricky little connection right here. It's just easy to just blend that right into the neck seam allowance. All right, so then uh, that's the Chicago. Let's talk about the Maison and maybe narrowing this up just a little bit. So on both the front pattern piece and the back pattern piece, you want to reshape this arm side. Now I've raised this one inch. That's an arbitrary number. It could be less than that, it could be more than that. It depends on how much you want to remove. And what you can do is actually pin fit this garment. You can actually pin the sleeve into the tissue of the front and the back, try it on, and you can begin to pin out what you want to remove under the arm. And one inch was what I decided at the time I was making it. So then I have marked the seam allowance and I have measured the finished, I don't have a dot on here, but I should, M measured the finished distance of both the front and the back. So then I compare that to what I need to do on the sleeve. And so you can see that I've removed one inch on both sides. This would represent what I've removed on the front. This would represent what I've removed on the back. But this is a little bit arbitrary. The measurement is more accurate. It just so happened that on mine, the one inch worked for both, but it might be that yours could be an inch and a quarter or three quarters or whatever. But whatever it is, you want to move in that distance and then reconnect to the circumference of the sleeve that you want. This could be much narrower, but I did keep the same circumference of the sleeve because I like that. So that's how you take out a little bit of that bulk under your arm. I think this is particularly useful for people who have sloped shoulders and don't particularly like that super oversized look, although this look is everywhere. It's all over the stores. It's very popular. It's a good look. So don't discount it. You might want to try it. But if it's not to your taste, then this is a solution that you can think about. So any questions that we need to answer? Um, Yes, what tool are you using for measuring? Oh, I'm glad you asked. This is the Curve Runner. This is a 12 inch circumference, and it's what I use to measure curves. Actually, measure anything now. I used to use a tape measure, I used to stand the tape measure on its edge and try to curve it, but this is so accurate. It's called a Curve Runner. We sell them. It's the best new tool that I've had in the last five years. You know, I'm pretty set on my tools, but I'm always looking for the next cool thing. And this is the one that I found recently, and it's fabulous. So check that out. Um, how do you miter on a tiny eighth inch hem? I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't bother to miter an eighth inch hem. I would just simply, um, it, it's like the order of doing draperies. <laughs> You always hem the vertical edge first, and then you hem the horizontal edge, and just dive, dive, and overlap the bottom hem over the front hem. I, I, there's a point at which mitering on a hem is just too fussy, and that eighth inch is that right there. Have you ever used a rolled hem on a serger for the Chicago? Yes, that is so interesting that you say that because I came back uh, from Switzerland and said to Aaron, I need to find that black linen jacket that has the rolled hem. <laughs> and I looked and no Chicago jacket with the rolled hem. And then I found the Chicago jacket with the baby hem and I thought, oh, that's right, it has a baby hem. A rolled hem would be perfect. And you know how to do that now because of the sterling jacket that you did last year and so confident. So it's the same concept. It'd be a, the perfect trim, perfect hem. Okay, that's all the questions. Okay. Okay, so I wanna talk you through these fabrics because this to me kind of represents uh, the ensemble. Uh, this was, uh, this little boutique that I was in uh, had just really just one rack of clothes about the width of this wall. Uh, not a lot, but everything was, was 
very, uh, it drew me into it because of its simplicity, which is a big thing in the whole spirit of things in that country anyway. Uh, interiors are pretty simple. Um, I think because of the age of things, I love it the way they use the interiors are simple and contemporary, clean, inside of buildings that were built in the 1600s, barn-like structures. I loved it. I loved the complement of those two uh, styles. So I pulled out three cotton knits, the kind of cotton knit that we use for the Maison joggers. And these, this is black, blue, and gray. And I decided that you know, yes, I could have pulled out color. I have on color today because I don't happen to own a pair of black Maisons, but that is my next make, as I've decided. Uh, I need a pair of black ones. I wish I'd had them on the plane. Um, so these are the, this is the perfect jersey knit, perfect weight for this particular pant. Not too light, not too heavy. It's a different feel than Ponte. Ponte would be too heavy. It would, uh, this, this creates a little bit of shape without um, being too stiff. And it has spandex in it, so there's recovery. And that's an important feature to, I think, uh, knit pants uh, that it has some recovery so you don't have this extreme bagging out at the knees and you know where else. So black and blue and gray. Right here, uh, this is Switzerland right here. Then, of course, the two stripes. So this is the stripe, the black and white stripe, also cotton jersey that I have on. And I, I guess I should maybe take this off. Um, I do have solid black sleeves. And is my, is my band up here a stripe or black? I can't tell. It's stripe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then a black band at the bottom. So I combined these two uh, for this particular mace on top. So, um, but we have a wide stripe, too, that is an, about an inch wide, even stripes. Um, it's a rib, so it's super stretchy, super drapey. It's rayon, so it's not polyester, so it's comfortable. And the fact that it's a rib, it doesn't wrinkle like some of the other knits do. And so I like these together. And I'll show you a mace on top that I made that I, where I combined the two widths of stripes, the narrow one and the wide one. Now, I've added some other color insertions and all of that, which is a different story altogether. But it's, it's fun to use those two together. But just a, a plain and simple striped t-shirt, all one fabric, is really fantastic. And if I were doing, a, let's say, a t-shirt like this, all the same fabric, I would probably do either a black ready-to-wear binding or white ready-to-wear binding. I love my stripe bindings, but there's something about putting a solid on this stripe for that t-shirt that I think is a, it's just a little bit better. But either width is great. Don't be afraid of stripes. Um, just, I don't know, you just can't be. <laughs> All right, so we have our bottoms and our top. Now some of you are gonna say, but this is black and this is blue. That's great. I happen to like black with blue. Some, not everybody can do that, but I'm telling you, I saw it all over the stores. They would always have a, a black and white t-shirt with any color, including blue, for the bottom, whether it was a skirt or pants, doesn't matter. So I think that's a great combination. All right, so then these, this side of the wall represents all of the lightweight linens that I think are the colors that I saw. The, the dark aged wood. This is a cross dyed linen that is both a light brown and a black, and so it comes off as a dark brown. Now, there's something to be said for having a great neutral jacket, something you can wear with everything. I love the black and white stripe with the neutral with either uh, any of these colors of bottoms, but this goes with everything. If you're looking for that great jacket that just goes with anything, maybe the neutral is for you. Here's the blue, love this blue, it's a beautiful blue. Kind of an indigo or woad type blue. And here we have it with the black and white stripe. It does go with the blue pants, but I would probably put it with black, to tell you the truth. I would wear um, black here and put a, a blue jacket with it. 
Here's the black, black linen. Can't go wrong with the black. A nice uh, mixed gray. This is white and a dark gray that comes off as a medium gray, but you see a lot of texture with this. And then here's more of a mocha color, uh, more of a, um, I don't know what the mixture is here. It's like charcoal and maybe even, yeah, charcoal and sort of a light pale type mocha brown. And then, of course, white. Can't go wrong with white either. Um, this white happens to be pre-laundered, so it already has a certain rumple to it, which I like. And then if you wash these other ones, you're going to get that same look. Not every linen washes well. Um, they all wash. Some get softer. Some stay kind of stiff, but these are all going to be soft and wonderful after you wash them. Um, I wash them first in hot water, and I dry them in a pretty hot dryer. And then from then on, I just wash the garment and hang it. I don't put it in the dryer again. Every once in a while, I might take it to the dry cleaners just to get it super fresh and all of that, but generally it's a one wash, uh, maybe a, a more tender, uh, not so hot of water. So jackets, of course, if you don't want a jacket, these make great pants. Uh, T-shirts, could be the ET, could be the Mason T, could be any of our T-shirt patterns. And bottoms, this could be the Mason uh, pants, it could be the Hudson pants, but it could also be your T-shirt. So there's all kinds of combinations going on here. Um, Sewing linen is not particularly mysterious, although there are some books out there on how to sew on linen, and we actually have a tutorial called Sewing with Linen. And in that tutorial, we talk about the Nine Lives shirt. This is a beautiful blueberry linen. And I talk about these bias cut strips of fabric. I think they're about three quarters of an inch wide. And it's a way to experiment with all of those uh, uh, decorative stitches that you've paid a lot of money for on your sewing machine and you never use. This is a fun way to actually see what they look like and use them as embellishment for your nine lives. So, but there are all kinds of other things in this very long tutorial of how to actually sew on linen. What needles, what threads, what finishes, hems and seam finishes and all of that. So it's a very useful tutorial. It just happens to be built around this particular pattern. So, um, Back to the Maison, I, I wanted to say a couple of things about this. Um, so this particular drawstring is interesting. Interesting in the fact that it is on top of another piece of, of elastic, and this is just floating in there. And we use uh, shoestrings, elastic shoestrings. Of course, you only need... I've forgotten now how we sell this. Do we sell them by the single or the package? Just because there are obviously two in a box. I think we sell them singly. That would make sense. Yeah. Um, so even though I'm showing a box of two, I think the way they're promoted on the website is a single shoestring. So we have five colors. We have fuchsia pink, black, dark gray, light gray, and a beautiful royal blue. And it's fun, actually, to kind of pop something with a great color, like if you're making black ones, put a pink shoestring. But these are just You just get the one. whole box. You get the whole box? Yeah. Okay, yeah, you get two, two for mm -hmm. whatever price mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. on the website. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and Those, all of our shoestrings are on sale this week. Yep, 9.35 this week. Okay, yep. all right. And then, when that drawstring comes out, by mistake, this is the tool to use, this easy threader. It's the best tool I've ever found for threading drawstrings through anything. Uh, I love this tool. So don't forget about that. All right, so any other questions? Uh, we do. Um, so to make the top with the two different stripes, how much fabric do I need for each stripe? 
Well, um, that's a good question. Um, I would say that you're going to need, um, I would get a yard at each. And we did have a Facebook Live when you first made that. Right. Um, we'd have to find the link to that. Right. Because I can't even remember the year. I can't um, either. It's probably last year, that last sense. summer or something like mm -hmm. that, because I don't mm -hmm. think it was a long, long time ago, maybe when the pattern first came out. Yeah, I, I actually pieced the band. So this was a different jersey, kind of a plaid jersey. So there's a seam right here that I use solid black to here. Um, I did the same thing for the binding. I, there's a seam right here, solid black, and then I combined it with the plaid jersey. Um, but yes, I think a yard each would be perfect, and then you can play around with it a little bit. I do remember when I made this that I took um, uh, one that I already made in a solid and I actually pinned where I thought that line should be on me. So it, this wasn't just a random choice here. I thought it... It just was the most flattering place on me for where that seam should be. So that probably would be something you want to do. For the um, curve runner, yeah. um, why the 12 inch over the 8 inch runner? Well, you can use the 8 inch runner. Um, you just have to do a little more math. Uh, 12 inches just gets you a little further uh, before you have to start over with numbers and add them together. But 8 inches is fine, but the 12 inch works in the same way and it just gives you a few more inches, a little more distance to measure. Have you ever tried cutting the um, Chicago on the bias, or the back of the Chicago on the bias? I've never tried that on the bias. Uh, is there a particular reason why you'd want to do that for the design of a particular fabric? I mean, it'd probably be pretty. Mm -hmm. um, if you're thinking it would give you a little more ease of movement, that's another reason to think about doing it, but I've not done it. Um, what is the weight of the linen? Well, I always... I, have, has it, I don't even know ever how to describe it. Um, you know, handkerchief linen is very, very lightweight and almost sheer. These are lightweight, but they're not so lightweight that they are like um, handkerchief in the pure sense of the word. So these are just very lightweight linens. In terms of ounces and all of that, you know, seven ounce is the, I believe, is sort of the standard of pant weight linens. These would be lighter than that. But as far as in terms of ounces, I can't really tell you what they are. They all vary just a little bit. Probably the black and the natural maybe are the heaviest of the two, but they're not heavy at all. They still have a lot of drape to them. So that, I'm sorry I can't tell you precisely. Each one of these kind of comes from a different source. And some people put ounces on their products and some people don't. Do you find that the knit um, sticks to, like the knit pants stick to the linen jacket? Uh, I haven't found that to be true. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Um. Th these knits have a pretty nice finish to them. They're not sticky particularly. Um, but I, yeah, I've been wearing this around and I haven't been hiking or moving or doing anything odd with the jacket over the pants. Um, can we please see the July So Confident shirt again? And also, will there be a choice for the kit? Uh, this is the July kit. And no, this is the singular offering for the kit. Um, does the, t the knot top grab to the jacket when putting it on the knot top? The Maison top, does it grab when I put the jacket mm -hmm. on? Maybe that's what, not the pants, maybe the... No. Yeah, I mean, I think, right, it's Do, do I need to adjust things when I... It's folding a bit, but I think once you just adjust it, it's fine, just like... 
a lot of shirts. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it looks. I good don't with feel it. hung up about it. It feels, mm -hmm. it feels good. I suppose mm -hmm. if I were standing in front of a mirror, maybe I would, you know, make sure I was <laughs> doing the right thing with my shoulders. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think it looks good. I think they looked it good together, and they don't seem like they're bunching under the no, arm or anything no. like That's that. That's why I like this Chicago mm -hmm. jacket so well. Mm -hmm. I have, have the Chicago jacket in a lot of different fabrics. I have it in wool and quilted cotton matelasses, and um, we have the corduroy one, denim you saw. It's pretty versatile. Mm -hmm. Ponte. Ponte. Do you have linen in brighter summer colors, fuchsia maybe? Oh yes, <laughs> we have a lot of linen, and we have a lot of great colors. Fab we probably have more linen than any fabric category um, that I can talk about, and we have tons of, of colors, beautiful colors. Reds, purples, lavenders, yellow, peach, everything. Yeah. And we do. Have I just on purposely pulled out my Switzerland colors. And if you go to the website under linen, you can see yeah. all um, the options that yeah. we have. So All weights, <laughs> light to heavier. Mm -hmm. Oh, We have lots of linen prints. I don't think we've ever had so many linen prints as we do this year. And we talked about doing another Facebook Live on, on yeah. linen. Oh, yeah. So we're, we're not done with linen yet. <laughs> we've only started on linen. <laughs> it's not July yet. <laughs> Oh, and uh, Betsy linked to all our solid linen options. Okay. So she is quick. Um, does the Chicago jacket run large? What is the ease? It, it's not uh, particularly uh, an oversized jacket, but with any jacket, we have an ease chart that's on our website. If you go under uh, help, you'll see, I believe the ease chart is there. And a jacket should have about six inches of ease, which is what this does have. Pretty standard. It's not super oversized. It's not meant to be a close fitting, fitted jacket. What is the um, fabric for the July project? The July fabric is cotton and it was hand block printed for us in India. It's, a, it's pretty lightweight actually. Um, lighter than most, uh, you know, it's sort of the weight of a cotton lawn. So the stripe knits, um, is, is it white? Is it off-white? What are the, what's the, the white? This is pretty white. This is a little bit whiter than this. This particular stripe is, oh, I guess I'll call it off-white, but it's not even off-white. It's, but it's more off-white than this white. Right. I know, but they, when you put them side by side, they look really good together. I know, they do. Even though but if you're looking for an exact match, mm, that's not that. But I would put those together. Mm -hmm. No question. You know, my watch band is bright white. So that, maybe that gives you a little bit of an idea. Pretty close to white. Mm -hmm. And then the, is that black and white or is that like more of a um, ivory? I consider this black and white. Um, that's again, a more of a natural white mm -hmm. than a, that bright, bright, bright white. Natural white, that's a good word. Mm -hmm. That's true. When you go to the paint store and you see all those 39 colors of white, <laughs> mm, yeah, they're all called white. <laughs> Somebody said optic white. Optic white, yeah. Yeah, everybody's pulling out the paint colors. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, I don't see any other questions. All right, so all of these fabrics on the wall today, the knits and the linens, are 20% off for the week. If you order black linen, we will give you a single button, beautiful little button, that is, um, I knew I'd lose the name of this. It's a natural, a rozo, is that the word? 
it's a natural button. It's not plastic, it's not polyester, it's a natural material. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, it's really nice. We'll give you a button, and the value of this button is $6.50. So if you order any quantity of black linen, you'll get a button. Now we only have a certain number of these buttons, and at some point we might run out. I'm sorry about that, but I think we can go quite a ways with it. Um, so all the fabrics at 20% off. The um, shoelaces, I think they're 20% off as well. Bessie might have to confirm that, but I think so. And then patterns, we have the Chicago jacket pattern and the Maison pattern. The Chicago jacket pattern is print only. The Maison top and jogger pattern is digital and print. And the Nine Lives pattern is digital only. Those three patterns are on sale. So we have shoelaces, patterns, fabric, and we have four um, tutorials. The five narrow hems, sewing with linen. We have a complete tutorial on sewing the mace on top and another separate full-on tutorial sewing the mace on joggers. All four of those tutorials are on sale this week. Okay. A couple more questions. Um, somebody asked about unbuttoning so you could see the collar. I wonder if it was the Riviera. Oh, this one? Um, it doesn't say which pattern, so. Okay. But. So it's just a nicely finished collar on both sides. It's cut on the bias. If it's a different pattern, I'll let you know. <laughs> um, let's see. Will you be able to provide the Riviera shirt on your vellum paper printed out? I think you might have to answer that. So when we add the product to the website, we will have that option, uh, like the other digital patterns, to where you could print um, that pattern. And but it'll be on vellum. Um, and it'll, we have a couple different um, papers. Um, so we do use vellum, but then we also do use another um, translucent bond, which is also very nice, and you can see through it. Okay. So we have some okay. great paper. Yes, the printing option will be available to you right. for the pattern. Okay. Okay. I don't see any other questions. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. We have a little surprise for next Tuesday, but in the meantime, happy 4th. Have a nice weekend. Hopefully, it's going to be a nice long weekend for you, and appreciate you joining me today. We'll see you again.